Uh, you're recording? I'll go this way. Thank you.
changes happen. Yes. And we are in one of those reformations where God is changing government in every arena, including the church. I know all of that, right? Mm -hmm. Anybody not understand that? Oh, good. That's good. All right. So, I'll give you a picture, a simple way to understand. If you think about a canal boat, you know, the long skinny boats that are like five feet wide and they go down the canals. It's going down the canal waterway and it hits a lock. Yeah. And so it has to go in there and someone has to close the gate, open the gate. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, it's in the lock. And you can't go anywhere until the water fills that lock and the gate opens and then it can go and usually the water is higher on the other side, right? Mm -hmm. So the church is kind of like that canal boat that was going along and what it was doing. But in order to go into the higher purposes of God, God had to shut everything down three years ago, 1999. Because everybody was saying, please, it's the year 2000, the harvest begins and then everything blew up. Are you not saying 1999? Yeah. 2019. 2019. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. Where's my head? I tempted on my iPad. 2019. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm communion wine. Watch out. Well, I wonder what the significance of that is. Yeah. 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 I see what I correlated with that one. Well, anyways, forgive me, guys, out there in Cyberland. It's 2019. Okay. That's interesting. Timothy <laughs> says whenever you do that, if there's a reason. Yeah. yeah. That's right. That's so right. we'll put an asterisk by that and we'll see what that meant. Yeah. Okay, so a canal boat went into the lock and it stopped 2019. And it's been on pause, so to speak. For most of the body of Christ, everything kind of stopped, didn't it? You know, everything got put on hold. Everything changed, and it's not going back. We're actually going to a new ground. Amen. And it waited there in that block until God opened the gates again. Amen. And when I saw the canal boat today in my hotel room, the gate opened and it was, the water was 12 feet higher, which is another governmental level. Oh, yeah. So it went in this level, stopped for three years, and it went up, and it began to come out. Ooh. Hallelujah. Because there was a lot of things that God had to put on pause because there was a lot of wrong stuff going on. Yeah. And God had to rack a lot of people and clean up a lot of things. And we all went through the refiner. And, uh, but this weekend that gate's open. Hallelujah. And you guys are the womb. W O M B. Womb. To see it open. God loves to birth in little places. He births in stables. He births in little um, He births. He doesn't do big judicial things in big events. He does it right. in the little places where he can get his warriors in and they all birth it together. Okay. So there's coming up an elevation and an acceleration. And you're not supposed to freak out when the gates open because there's faster waters on the other side. Swifter waters. There you go, there you go. That's true. So as we were leaving, I saw all these angels uh, coming here in this area. And they all have white hard hats on, which to me is construction mode, <laughs> building mode. Yeah, and there's a lot going on. And they had yellow ribbons tied to their waist, and they had small shovels, ready, golden shovels to dig. Mm -hmm. Because God is building His glory here. Mm -hmm. But what He said is when people come with little shovels, it's, it's more of a groundbreaking kind, where they come to 
break ground on a new, like when you buy property or buy land, you put a big river on it and it has new construction, and they all have their shovels and they stick it in the ground and they turn it over. You're in a turning over season. Mm. And these angels have shovels and they put their shovels in to establish a new beginning here. I don't know your history here, but it went shallow and fell for a while. Something died down. That's breaking new ground here. Hallelujah! A new beginning and a new season of building is before you. But you cannot look <clears throat> around you in doom and gloom and hopelessness. You have to dig your ground in hope. That's right. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Because that's the only way it's going to happen. You have to get a long-term view of the future for you. You're not here for just a little while. That's right. That building that so harvest can take Bob said 40 years to bring in. It don't happen all the night. Is the church ready for it right now? No, nah, I don't smash and flat. Actually, you'll run out of the building because they'll freak you out. But God, God has had to handle that. But what I'm saying is, you have to have an attitude of gratitude. And you have to anchor yourself in hope because that is what goes in behind the veil. And it is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to build his house. Amen. And he said, when you lift me up, I will draw all men unto me. Right? Yes. Jeremiah 4, 3 says, and I always read out the Amplified because I like teaching out of it. For thus says the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your ground left uncultivated for a three-year season. Oh, boy. Wow. Three years. I said the Lord to the men and women of Euro Beach, Break up your ground, left uncultivated for a three-year spiritual season, so that you may not sow among thorns. Now what God has been doing is getting rid of all the weeds, the seeds, oh, the attitudes, um, all the dark, right? Because when he sows the word, he doesn't want it choked out anymore. Amen. And so that three-year period was burning us out, rotor rootering us and everything yes. else to change us so that when he opens the gate again and we go, we don't take the old issues and the new flow. Mm -hmm. And God wants you to know what he's about to show so that you can grow mm -hmm. because it's time for you to know which way he's going to go. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 9, 10 says, For does he speak certainly and entirely for our sakes? Assuredly, it is written for our sakes. Because the plowman ought to plow in hope. It's not the end. We have decades to go. It's not the end of the world. Yes, there's going to be a lot of upheaval and shaking, shake and bake. Because <laughs> God is turning the planet upside down Amen. to shake it out like it's a harvest time. Yes. Amen. And you have to expect shaking and you can't be afraid of it. You're here as a witness. We already know what God's going to do, so why do we get afraid? We shouldn't be afraid. No. You're the messengers. Yes. Yeah, Says here, you have to plow in hope and the thresher ought to thresh in expectation of partaking of the harvest. So you're not only plowing in hope, you're threshing, expecting something to happen. That's right. Something good. Amen. Put in a sickle. You're not just doing it all wrong and be toast. They're going to run us over, oh, take us God. over. You know, we're going to die. It's like, stop it. No. <laughs> Actually, you're the answer, the solution to those that are afraid. Woo! Mm -hmm. If you're afraid, you're yep. going to die. That's right. That's right. Totally you have right. to have an expectation. Totally right. Absolutely. Healings and miracles don't happen if you have no hope and no expectation. Amen. Right. Jesus had to leave entire cities and could do nothing because mm -hmm. they didn't have faith. They didn't believe. Mm -hmm. And you have to open your heart. You have to, Lord, I believe. I believe this is my night. I'm here by divine appointment. Amen. And I expect yes. 
So the Lord said, you are breaking ground for a groundbreaking season. Amen. Amen. The so three years is up. Rosh Hashanah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. And the gate's going to open. I'm warning you. Oh, yeah. You're going to get pretty drunk. <laughs> <laughs> and if you get offended by that, there's the door right there. Because when I gate opens, I ain't responsible. <laughs> Actually, God's not responsible. What I'm saying is, don't be afraid of God's love. Amen. 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 Yes, yes. Because he does That's good. Us. Thank you. And he wants to give us all that we desire. Huh? I know. The whole so the overtaking of one season will bring in acceleration for harvest preparation. Mm -hmm. right. He said here, you're breaking ground for a ground-breaking season. Hosea 10, 12. So for yourself, according to righteousness, which is uprightness and right standing with God. Yes. And then you reap according to mercy and loving kindness. Yes. Don't beat them on the head with the Bible. Right. Come on, try. Be a big poster. Love them. Mm -hmm. Be compassionate, be patient, be kind. Yeah. That speaks more than yeah. just flipping scriptures at somebody. Mm -hmm. They want to know you care. Yep. There's so many afraid people are afraid. Yeah. They're nervous. Really? They don't know what to do. That's They're at their breaking point. And they actually need you to give them a hug. It's going to be okay. The Lord loves you. Overall, be patient because patience, um, people are at their nerves in, a lot of people. And he said, if you'll be patient and just smile and love them, they'll come, they'll respond to you. They're looking for love. He said here, again in that verse 12, Hosea 10, 12. Break up your uncultivated ground. So the last three years, everybody say, it's done. It's, it's done. done. It's over. It's over. I'm not going back. I'm not I'm going, going back. back. No more baggage. No, no more, more baggage. Because the gate's about to open. Because the gate's about to open. Hallelujah. Now you can feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Now why does he say that? Break up your uncultivated ground from the past three years. Throw it, just shut the door. Yes. So if it's dead, let it die. Amen. Let it die, right? right. He said, I got a new shovel for you. Mm -hmm. Angels are going to break it open for you. Mm -hmm. It is time to seek the Lord, to inspire for and of Him, and to require His favor. You can require favor. <laughs> Lord, I require favor. Without it, I'm dead. Favor with God, favor with me. Amen. That's right. What we need, he said, inquire for and of me and require my favor. Till he comes. Require it till he comes and teaches you righteousness and reigns his gift of salvation upon you. Now, he said, Hosea 10 12. In the Amplified. Thank you. So the last thing I want to share, um, the overtaking of one season upon another. It's going to be a big mess. It's going to be chaos. It's going to be up here. I love adventures. Amen. The bigger the mess, the more the blast. Come on. Why? Because Jesus said, I've come to bring a sword. I've come to turn cities inside out. I've come to bring change. Man. Change is good. Amen. How many don't want to change? How many like your life the way it is? Uh -uh. No. I'm not yeah. stuck. Hallelujah. We're not stuck. No. We're always ready for change. It's good. That's a good thing. Reformation is our messy, but the last one is a great global change. Hallelujah. And you are in the beginning of a great global reformation. Amen. So hang you are. Mind. Amen. Don't hold your breath. Breathe. Amen. Chill out. Daddy's got this. Actually, he's in it. And why does he say, I'm shaking everything that can be shaken, Hebrews 12? Because what's left that is, does not shake, what's left standing as the dust clears, is what will continue. Yes, amen. And you are what's going to continue. Amen. So, Amos 9, 11 through 13 says, In that day in which you're living, 
Will I raise up the tabernacle of David? The following up of rules that was put on pause. And I will close up the breaches. That's why we're in the hold in that gate. We're just waiting in the lock. And I will raise up the rooms and I will build it as in the days of old. In other words, as in the days of old means I will build it according to my original intent for you. Amen. I will build it according to the blueprint and the plan and the scroll that Whoa. I built for you. Thank you, Lord. So that they may possess the remnant of all the nations that are called by my name, says the Lord who does this. God's doing it. Amen. Now, of course, we have a fight with, it, with men and the devil, but they lose. Because mm -hmm. they're not greater than God. Sure. Verse 13, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that the plowman will overtake the reaper. And the treasure of grapes, him who sows seed, is going to be a glorious Reformation harvest, a big mess. So, take it from me and leaders and pastors, you might as well stop trying to control everything because you're going to get wrecked too. <laughs> That's part of why God blew it all up three years ago. He started that. Oh my. He said, as everything goes around and around on the wheels and everybody's Moving in their ministry, the mountains will drop sweet wine, the hills will melt, everything that was barren and unfruitful will begin to bud and bloom and be a womb with spiritual blessing. So there is a lot of birthing that's going to go on. There, there is. So, one interesting aspect I just want to share real quick about the pause is uh, a few years ago we had a conference in Rochester. Mm -hmm. We had your friends with us, and, and um, there was other speakers too. I mean, we don't just have one, we had plenty of them. And um, I had an encounter with the Glory Train at that time. Actually, I had several, but Jeff wanted me to come up and share my last encounter with the Glory Train. And this is an example of what went on pot. So I'm just going to share it. I saw the Glory Train coming down an old western prairie, like sea. And it's an old black iron horse train. And it was coming, and you could hear the whistle blowing. It's a black iron horse train. <laughs> and um, I was at a train station waiting with people that were waiting for the glory train to come in. But these people were dressed in like 1800s clothes, you know, a couple hundred years ago. They had suits on and parasols and big hats and poofy gowns, you know, and all that. And they're all waiting at the station. They could hear it coming. And all of a sudden there was a big old wreck, a big explosion. God wrecked it. The whole thing blew up. Big wreck. Mm. For a reason. And they all start crying. <clears throat> and I and I was there and I said, Why are you crying? Don't cry. I said, Jesus wrecked this for a reason. There's a better better thing coming. There was a lot of mixture. There was a lot of bad things at that time. And had God not allowed it to come it would have fell apart and the harvest would have been stuck. Mm. So mm. we've been in a three year global delay. But what I want to say is out of that train wreck, I told them, don't weep. There's something greater coming. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So out of it came this, on the tracks, was this little, you know those railroad cars where two men are on it and they pump that thing oh, up yeah. and down? Yeah. So that little car came rolling out of the wreck onto the train, the train tracks. But what was on the the cart was not two men, but a like a big fireplace with a fire burning in it. And the Lord said, "What I require is the intercession to burn higher." He said, "There must be prayer on the altar in my church again, Amen. because they've lost the first love. They're not on fire. They're lukewarm." They're full of mixture and all kinds of stuff. 
But he said prayer will bring in the truth, the new that's coming. That's right. So we, we prayed that and I shared that in that conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, I when Jeff went home recently, I said, oh. I said, um, and then I started seeing the glory train again. But when the cycle, when we came back, over this Rosh Hashanah, and I figured it out, I said, Pat, because originally, Timothy wasn't coming. They are just Pat and I for today and tomorrow. And then I texted Timothy, or Jerry asked me, well, if Timothy, can he come? And I said, well, I don't know. We haven't seen him for a while. So I texted Timothy, or he did, one of us did. And he said, I'm coming. I said, oh, that's interesting. We're all together again. Because the last time we were together was back then. And three years cycle back in the same town, wow. it's come back around. Wow. <laughs> it's a full cycle, full season work. And one day we don't say to Mary, this time, and Zachariah and all the other ones that birth babies, about this time I will come back around when it's time. Wow. There's a birthing wow. over this weekend. It's time. It's time. And this time, because of the three-year pause and the global governmental dealings that God is uncovering all the trash and all the junk that's been going on behind the scenes, yep. right? Because yeah. yeah. he's cleaning up the tracks. He's cleaning stuff up. He's cleaning the church up, too. The natural government mirrors the spiritual government. You want to see the condition of the church? Look at your government. Because you are the spiritual government of our nation, which should be greater than our natural. Mm. So God's been cleaning, and that's why he's dealing with all this stuff, and we're going to see a lot more. But the three years cycle comes back because the ground had to lay fallow for three years. Now think about this, when in the Old Testament when they lay the ground fallow, they didn't eat new crops for three years. Yes. They what? They couldn't plant again for three years. They had to eat all of what was left for three years. After three years they could plant again. So what season is it? It's time to replant. It's time to sow and hope. Sow an expectation. And to sow seeds of righteousness again. <laughs> They're okay. We're used to that. So the canal is in the lock and the gates opening this weekend. And it was it went up twelve feet, which is going on another governmental level. We're coming out to strip the water. And you can't steal it. Because Jesus said, um, we don't steal. He steers the boat. He takes the boat. So you can't steer and tell God how you want it, when you want it, and when you want it. Come on. 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 Come on.
will recognize the atmosphere on that side compared to this side. It's because they're looking for faith, they're looking for hope, they're looking for expectation, they're looking for desire, and they're looking for fire. I'm here on fire. So this cut off. Is it still playing? And you have a full center? Yeah. yeah. A big burn. Let me check on mine. Okay. I'm not condemning anybody. And you don't have to be scream and shout and do all that to be on fire. It's just the spirit is responding to their hunger. If I missed anything before I have to <laughs> And I just want to erase everything off my eraser board, my chalkboard right now. I love being a blank slate. Because Lord, I'm, I'm on an adventure with you. You created me and all of us to be alive today. Because we're going to tell your story. And so Lord, come and just strengthen everyone right now. Let just the breath of heaven come in. And just begin, begin to refresh everyone right now. Just raise your hands, everybody. Close your eyes, get your eyes off of each other. Or we just receive your breath. Or thank you for the refreshing, for strength, to lift the tiredness, the weariness, the labor, the burdens, the cares. Yeah. Just that gentle moving of your breath right now in the atmosphere. Just take a deep breath. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, just for that refreshing right now. We thank you, Lord, for strength. They go from strength to strength to strength. From faith to faith. Faith. So when the gates opened and I saw the canal boat go into the swift of waters, I mean, it was like going down a, um, you call those log rides where the log gets goes down the tube of water? A log ride? It was like, because the waters were swift. Why? Because God's going to do a swift work in this generation. Wow. Because when all of the offices and the gifts and all God's people begin to sow, plant, Water and reap, and it begins to overtake the wheels of the glory train begin to turn, and it begins to acceleration, and it becomes swift. Because it's not you doing it, it's the Lord. You're just the one to release the word and stretch out your hands. See, Jesus said, It's my Father that does the works through me. It was the Father that worked the miracles through Jesus. And all you do is stretch out your hand and say, Jesus, have your way. And the swiftness, the swiftness will begin to run, even in this place. So you're, bird, you're digging, you're breaking ground this weekend. The angels are stuck their shovels in and they're turning. The old dead growth is done in the earth. Hallelujah. The fallow ground, the old season, everything that was put on pause is finished. You're not going to do that anymore. You're going to have fresh things to do. How many of you are just here? Amen. So, Lord, come. Yes. So, we this weekend. Yes. And show us, give us a preview of the things you're calling us to do so that we can agree with you and obey you in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to take up the offering now. So um, Tony is going to give us a word about the offering. But if you want to make checks out, make it to the salvation of God. Uh,
comment and to also go to the slgchurch.net and it also has the information on there how to give um, electronically so you can do that and uh, let's bless them Lord God and give them the strength to do what they need to do Lord God and let's bless them 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 Earlier this evening when uh, Mark was playing, um, I was listening intently to the Holy Spirit and he was saying that there's a new sound in town. And when that sound is touched by the anointing, we now get in the midst of his presence. And when we are in his presence, there is fullness of joy. And the other thing that I love reading in the Bible, it says no flesh will glory in his presence and so all of us that were in his presence we long to stay there all day long but it doesn't happen so in the meantime please continue to pursue so anyway this evening it is a blessing to be able to bless somebody else that's what he conditions are hard to do and in proverbs uh, 3 9 and 10 it says honor the lord with your wealth with the first fruits of your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. I don't know about you, but I don't mind investing in the new wine that we're receiving Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So as you all come up, there's a basket right here to the right. Uh, I think we'll do this. Okay. I promise I won't sing while you guys walk up here. <laughs> so please, when you're ready and you've heard your heart and you put that in the basket, please come up. God bless you. And on behalf of our New Hope Church, we're very glad that you're here.
She mentioned the Lord releasing the meat of the word tonight. The meat of the word. So why don't she, as we uh, do the second half, I wanted to just share one experience that a brother had called Neville Johnson years ago. And in this experience that he had, he said, I was traveling down a road, and he said the road came to a fork. And he said there were little shops, two shops, one on this side of the road, the fork road, one, the fork would go this way, and the other road would go that way. And he said in the corners of the roads that would go either way were like little shops. And he said the shops had like windows in the front, and he said one shop had milk in the window. He said the other shop had meat in the window. Mm -hmm. And he said I had to choose which way I was going to go. Mm -hmm. Was I going to choose choose the milk road or was I going to choose the meat road? And he said I chose the meat road. Amen. And he said so I began to go up the road and he said when that but he said this road we went into an incline and it became a mountain. And he said it was Mount Zion. He said it was Mount Zion. And he said, I, he said, I ascended the mountain, and he said, and I got to the top of the mountain, he said there was a castle. And he said, in the castle, he said, I walked into the castle, and he said, like the center room in the castle, he said, I walked in there, and he said there was a large table, like a round table, and he said that sitting at the table were Moses, Joshua, Abraham, the Lord Jesus, and then people from our day were all sitting at the table together. And he said Jesus spoke and said this word, I'm going to read it to you here, when they were all together. Jesus said, heaven and earth will be joined in places like this. Does not my word say that it was possible to have days as heaven upon the earth? Amen. Mm. Now Neville said, I looked up and there was no roof on the castle. And he said, I could see all the way to the third heaven. Wow. And then he said, Jesus told him, it was Deuteronomy 11.21. So let's turn there in our Bible a minute. Remember, Jerry had this word at the beginning, the, the meat of the word tonight. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 21. See, God obviously is telling you here in Florida, Vero Beach, he's saying you're going up higher. You're ascending his mountain. You're going up Mount Zion. It's, it's Hebrews 12.22. That's what you're, where you are. Hebrews 12.22. Here in Deuteronomy 11.21 it says that your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear to your fathers to give them. Here it is. As the days of heaven upon the earth. Now see, this is Jesus' prayer. Jesus' prayer was, Thy kingdom come, Father, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. World without an end. Amen. But Neville said on Mount Zion, when he went the meat of the word road, it led to Mount Zion, and there was the castle, and then there was the room, and then there was this meeting, and the Lord said, It's the days of heaven coming to earth. Wow. Now what you need to realize is, as Jerry said earlier, there in our city, Rochester, New York, mm -hmm. our city one time was literally totally saved. Wow. wow. Charles G. Finney led the revival in Rochester, 1830-31. A six-month revival, and in six months, 95% of our city was saved. Wow, that's awesome. Wow. Now, another thing that... I just share this part because... You need to learn the ways, I'm not saying you don't know the ways of the Spirit, but you need to learn more of the ways of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
And one of the ways of the Holy Spirit is he'll do things by signs and you need to get pay attention to what he's doing. Mm -hmm. So we came in here and I'm just gonna Attached. You might say, oh, that's uh, different, isn't it? Yeah, it's different. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie said to me, she said, uh, I, I, I bought you some gifts tonight. And she says, I bought, I, I put this on the bag. And she said, it came to me, the eagles. The eagles, because we had told her that the church here is an eagle's nest, okay? And I said, this color here of the feathers is the color of the glory. I don't know if you know that. This is the color of burl, green and blue. This is the wheel in the wheel color. Oh, okay. Burl, green, blue, green, blue. Now notice it's a little feather. See it? Yeah. It's a little feather. You might say, this is kind of different, Brother Pat. Yeah. Well, the Lord's different, you know. He's never born. And the thing you got to realize about God is He's not like us. The more you see God, I'm not a literal. I've seen God has appeared, the angels have appeared, to, I've seen the glory, and I've seen the cherubim many times, and they are not, they are different looking beings. They have eyes all over them, they have wings, and they fly, and they have coals in their bodies. And when they fly through the air, the coal burns like a fire. And they dart like this when they fly. They don't make that noise. <laughs> but they fly like that. They dart to and fro, as each one says. But I'm bringing this up because these are signs from the Lord. Because I told Jerry that the Lord told me that there would be a certain angel here tonight. And Jerry didn't know this. And this angel is an angel of truth. But he also comes in the he comes in the, he's a manifestation of the part of the glory, the cherubims. And his face changes. I see the lion man. He has an eagle face. And just raise your hands because I tell you that presence of God is beginning to come in here, man. Hallelujah. From that angel. We should talk about him. He, the Lord sends him. Thank you, Lord. That angel was in here. You can feel this great presence coming in here, man. You can feel the atmosphere has changed in here for the last 30 seconds. There's like a there's like a billowing presence coming from this angel of truth that's come in here. Mm. Now this angel is connected. It, he carries the mantle of the seven spirits of God, and when this angel comes, Let's turn to a scripture I want to show you about this. Go to Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 12 in your Bible. Mm -hmm. We're just following the Spirit. The book of Ezekiel chapter 10, verse 12. The Lord told me that He quickened the date of March 11th to do with the meeting. On March 11th, God sent back his Shekinah glory to the earth. He had, Lord's prophet Bob Jones, we have bowed at our church many times, and 
1977, on March 11th, he said the Lord lifted the glory from the earth because the church was merchandising it. Uh oh. And God said, I won't tolerate that with my glory. Mm. He says, He'll share His glory with no man. That's right. Yeah. Bob, the Lord told Bob, I'll send it back to you when you're older, mm. and then it will never leave again. And that returned a few years ago. It's now back in the earth. Mm. But this angel is connected. To the glory, this angel of truth. Verse 12 of Ezekiel 10 says, And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and their wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they forehand. This angel, Bob, we have Bob at our church the first time he. We went out to dinner after the meeting, and he was telling me about a visitation he had with this angel of truth. And he said, Brother Pat, he said, he was so big, he was as tall as the Empire State Building. Wow. And he said, all around him were these cherubims. He said there were thousands of them. They were all around where he, this angel, and he said, every time the angel would speak to God, they would shout the praises of the Lord. They would shout praise unto God. Because they're worship angels. They surround God on the throne. But here you can see, they have eyes all over them. But we know the eyes from Revelation chapter 4 and 5, it says that the Lamb had the seven eyes. The Lamb of God. Which are the seven spirits of God Amen. sent forth into all the earth. So the Lord is telling you in this church ministry that you're going to flow in the seven spirits of God. The mantle of the seven spirits of God. The seven eyes of God. But the Lord told me that, that his Shekinah glory would be here. That's what the presence that just came in here when this angel came in. Amen. And the mantle of Christ that the end time church is going to wear, the same mantle, was the mantle. Jesus didn't just flow in the gifts of the Spirit. He flew in, he flowed in the seven spirits of God. Greater than the nine gifts. You see, the, the mantle, all these are seven mantles. The mantle of Christ. But the Lord is putting that on you. Even here tonight. Yeah. It's going to be different after tonight. Amen. What Sue was saying is he, the Lord, the angels are breaking ground. There's a new beginning. There's a new digging. There's a new building. And that prophet Bob Jones, he told us, he said, you're calling is not for visitation, it's habitation. Amen. He said, God's not coming to visit your city. He's coming to set up his habitation. Yes. 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 See, we don't want a visitation. We want habitation. Yes. Don't you want habitation? Don't you want God to stay? Amen. See, our city got saved because God came and made it his habitation. God wants to do that here. See, our city was 95% was saved. That, that when that angel, I told you that Bob told me about that night at dinner, he's been talking about your visitation in 93 on Valentine's Day. The next morning, Bob said, I was in my hotel room, about to come out to minister, and he said, That same angel came into my hotel room. Rochester, that he was standing in the meeting with us as Bob was ministering. And he said, this angel is the one that told me that, that the Finney revival in Rochester would be restored. 
Mm. But he said, this works out this time, it won't be 95%, saved, it'll be 100%. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, and I'll drive out all the devils. Hallelujah. Imagine a city with no devils. Hallelujah. The angels hold on, he said, when the finger of God will happen, there were no devils. God cast them all on righteousness. And it was the holiest city on earth at that time. He's wow. Now, there's something happening in here right now. Raise your hands. There's a, there's a whirling presence. There's a whirling, Hallelujah. There's a whirling, like a whirling. And it's circling around your being right now. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is bearing witness Woo. to what I'm telling you. Man, I'm glad I'm getting broken. There's like a staggering drunkenness. You're being filled with the Spirit right now. Thank you. Whoa, Thank you, God. You can feel the cloud. You can feel the cloud. You can feel the cloud of the glory. Mm. You can feel the cloud. Oh, come on, the concussion. Even the concussion. I'm telling you, you can feel the cloud, man. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Whoa, whoa. It's getting messy up here, too. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, we welcome the glory. Thank you. <laughs> now the Lord said that as we were finishing this year, there's only a few days left until the, um, well, I think it's Saturday night at sundown, yeah. as Rosh Hashanah begins. Sunday. I think it's sundown the next. Sunday. 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 Yeah. Sundown Sunday. Sunday. Okay. <laughs> well, the thing is that. As we end this year, the Lord said, I want you to end it right. Mm -hmm. And he said, I told you prophetically that this year I would deal with the character of the body of Christ. Oh my God. All right. He said, I would bring forth more of my divine nature, my character. Yes. And he said, then I can trust my church with my great power. Mm -hmm. But he said, I, want, I don't want what happened in the past moves to happen again. Mm -hmm. Many of the past moves of God, they, what happened to men and women of God is they went off. They had, they, they had some corruption. They entered into, some different ones entered into different corruption, yeah. different sin. And the Lord said, I'm not going to have that happen in my end days. He said, I'm going to purify first. He said, I'm going to bring forth my character and my nature before I give the great power. And that's what he's been doing in 2022. And that, that same prophet, Bob Jones, had gotten a prophecy years ago. And I'm going to read you. The Lord told me that this year, this part of the prophecy was going to happen. We only have a couple of days left of this year. Now, here he quotes scripture, Light is sown like seed for the righteous, and gladness for the upright in heart. Light is sown like seed for the righteous. You are all born again by the incorruptible seed of the word of God. That's a seed of light. But who is it for? The righteous. And for the upright in heart. Amen. See, God says, I want my righteousness to come forth more in my church, in my body. Yes. Can I share something? Yes. As I was praying before we came, I said, Lord, what do you want to share tonight? What, what's going to be the message of the prophets tonight? And it was about the righteousness. It's in Second Chronicles 16, 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of those whose hearts are blameless towards him. That's us. Amen. All of us. As we Amen. purify our heart and that his eyes are watching. Amen. Amen. Okay, you. He get, I prayed about it. Yeah, so what are you going to share tonight, Lord? Now, Second Chronicles 16, 9. 9. Mm -hmm. uh, she, that was our scripture last weekend. No. In our church. No. We just gave that word a couple days ago. <laughs> In our church. Mm -hmm. 
Now here's the thing that the Lord said a couple nights ago about that scripture is that the um this is a this really is the Holy Ghost because um thank you for really man the glory's coming in here strong. I can feel it. It really is for this. It's for this. I love the Holy Spirit when He does stuff like this. Because we're all one body. And the Spirit's saying the same thing all over the world. Amen. We're all in New Zealand. The same thing's being spoken by the Spirit. The body of Christ over there, the body of Christ here. And a sister in our church, we're talking about this, Jerry, on Sunday night. So that's just this week. Okay? And. We were doing our seven hours of prayer. We do prayer seven hours once a quarter. I don't have time to go that, but that's, a, that's the highest level of prayer, seven hours. When you pray seven hours, pray seven hours straight, you fully birth the things of the Spirit. Amen. That was Jesus' prayer life. You prayed seven hours. Mm. It's all my prayer was Jesus' prayer life. The Lord gave me our understanding. I was quick to say this. The, uh, the Lord said to me, He said, Jesus' prayer life was seven hours the highest level, and there were seven days a week, so he prayed seven hours a day, seven days a week, which is 49 hours, and then he prayed 49, and then he came 50 Jubilee. Oh! oh really? There's how he became Jubilee. Because he prayed 49, he entered into 50 Jubilee. Wow. 50 was the manifestation of the 49 hours of prayer a week. See, there it is. She's very comfortable all according to scripture. But the seven hours of prayer we did, and we had a lady ten years ago in our church, and she still still comes at different times, and uh, her name is Amy, Amy DeFabio, and she had, incredible. she had been going through a lot of um, physical things ten years ago, and her husband, Mike, was attending my parents' um, at the time, were uh, they were leaders in the healing rooms of Rochester. They ran the healing rooms. Yeah, yeah. My parents, yeah, and yeah, yeah. so her husband Mike was taking the training to be part of the healing room ministry. Mm -hmm. They do training, you know, for the workers. And uh, so he was taking one of the, the training, and he heard about our church and from my parents, and um, you know, God, how God was really moving and doing a lot of. Things, a lot of healings and miracles and signs and wonders and so his wife had, she was I think it was a car accident or something I think if I remember right that she had had her but her what it was is that she had a hole in her spine mm -hmm. she the doctor's order she'd never walk again she was going to be crippled and she would never be able to walk again and she had a hole in her spine and she was in terrible pain all the time, oh never not in pain. Well, the spine, you have a hole in your spine. And Mike, you know, her husband, was taking the training and believed in healing, believed in miracles, and he wanted his wife to get healed. And, and this, this is kind of funny, but Amy, she gives a testimony, she gives a testimony, she says, uh, she says, she says, I don't want to go to that church. She never been to our church. My husband never been to our church. And, uh, you know, and she and her husband, Mike, got her to convince her, finally got her to come. And, and she, her own testimony was, she said, you know, she said, I didn't want to be there. And she said, so they sat in the very back row of the church. And, uh, and we have an angel, another angel that works with us called the Angel of Divine Health. Mm -hmm. This angel is so healthy, if you look at his face, you can't look at it because it's so healthy. Wow. He's the angel of divine health. Wow. And Brother Timothy, maybe we'll talk about this on Sunday night when he's here. Now he's going to be here with us tomorrow night, but he's going to speak on Sunday. But, um, but anyway, this particular angel, we were in Indonesia with Timothy, 2008, and again, this, and this angel, he also is he is also a cherubim, but he's also a, but he's connect, he has 
in your face again. <laughs> and when he appeared, this is interesting, he appeared to Timothy and my wife Sue at the same time and we were in Indonesia at a big volcano we went to pray at. And, uh, and we were there and, and Timothy and my wife Sue both went in the spirit and saw this angel. And he looked like an eagle. But he had he had thirty he had thirty three eyes on his wings. His wings. Thirty three eyes. And angel of divine health. And he appeared in the form of an eagle. And remember the cherubim had an eagle face, part of the faces. And so he appeared when we were at the volcano, and then Timothy and and Sue saw there was the ruling spirit of Indonesia because they were very in Indonesia there was a lot of idolatry. Oh, yeah. You walk you literally drive down the roads and they have shops and all they sell are idols. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Physical idols. Oh, oh, yeah. There's so much idolatry there. Wow. And it, it was the uh it was two different ruling devil spirits that were over in Indonesia that Timothy and my wife Sue saw in this experience. And they saw this eagle angel come down like lightning and strike and just destroy those spirits. Thank you, Lord. God's been, God's been moving greatly in Indonesia. He's been moving in a way in the end days. So anyway, then, then we uh, left the volcano and we were there praying and interceding. They had that experience. We're back to our hotel and everybody say, I won't limit God. I won't limit God. I won't limit God. So we're swimming in the pool. <laughs> and this angel comes and stands next to the pool. Oh no. And Timothy says, I see the angel, I see the angel. And we started getting so drunk in the spirit. <laughs> you know? And then we went into the pool and the angel came in the pool. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. He came in the pool and the pool was cold and the water turned hot. Wow. And he went into the pool. Wow. And, he hot. <laughs> and then Timmy began to have a heart attack. All of was swimming and he began to have a heart attack. Wow. And, he went, and, and, and the angel. Was he, if the angel of divine health came into the water and Timothy was totally healed. Wow. 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 So I bring this up because this this angel, then when Timothy was with us, he saw that the angel was going to be working with us in our church and at times and the spirit would will. And, he, and uh, so this particular night that the sister wrote back to Amy, her testimony, put the, the hole in her sign. I just said you're not going to be able to, you're, you're, you're being a wheelchair the rest of your life. And she, uh, was in the, sitting in the back, and this angel, I was up ministering, and, and I saw the angel come into the meeting. The angel of divine health came in. And my wife Sue came up. And, why don't you come up, Sue, and just share for a minute what the Lord showed you. So there's, a, there's a reason we're sharing this, because it's connected to, what God's going to do here. Amen. Um, I was standing at the pulpit and I saw the glory go over the back, like a gold thing hovering in the air. Gold is the glory. And it was hovering over and I didn't know her from anybody. It was like a gold cloud. And um, so I just told him to stand up, you know. Glory's there and God's healing you. And um, didn't know anything about well, she her. She didn't know Amy's condition in the natural. Yeah. We never met her. I never and um, so Amy uh, came up to us. She actually walked that night. The Lord he totally healed her. Totally healed her. Gave wow. Her. wow. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. She she's actually did a video of her whole testimony yes. that you can watch. She actually wow. has done one. But um, the short version of it, hopefully I get it right, is... Um, uh, she said when I told her that the glory was back there and that guy was healing her, she said she like left her body, she was hovering in the air. Left her body. Uh, her body. She was looking down at herself. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she felt like she was floating. Glory, yep. Because the glory was like redoing her, just, mm -hmm. you know, fixing her. And um, uh, that's the short version. But um, 
She's been healed now 10 years. Wow, praise the Lord. Never had anything to Praise the Lord. Her testimony is amazing. And literally, I'm going to tell you something. Her neighbors screamed when they saw her walking. Yeah. They said, you can't walk, 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 you so she's been healed, and in that morning, we were doing the seven hours of prayer, and she knew about our prayer meeting, and sometimes she'd come, and, and she says, she said, I was sitting home, and he said, and she said, the Spirit said, get up and go to that prayer meeting and pray for an hour. Pray, because I'm gonna, I'm dealing with the hearts of my people, and I'm, I want them to have my heart. And that was the scripture, Second Chronicles 16, 9. See, this, this is what the Lord gave this scripture to do with, this. and Amy came, and she said, now here's the thing, when she was healed, God opened her eyes, and now and she began to see angels, Woo! and cherubims, and, and, and Jesus would appear to her, and I mean, incredible experiences. Yeah. And uh, so she said that, she said, I was driving to your church to do the prayer with you guys for an hour, what the Lord told me to do. And she said, I was going up uh, one of the highways called 590 Highway in Rochester. Mm -hmm. And she said, I went to this one area, and, she, and, and 10 years ago, after she was healed, she said she left uh, one of our meetings a week or two after that, 10 years ago. And she said she went to her daughters who were living in that area where that highway is. And she says, I was out of their balcony of their apartment. And she said, she said, I'm standing on the balcony, and by God came over her eyes to see in the spirit. And she said, the wind, first, she said, the wind begins to blow outside. And she says, and then she says, and she said, I see Jesus. And then she says, I see the back of the Lord, and he's got like, he's got like a, it was like a purple robe on him. She said, I saw his purple, he was clothed in his purple robe. And she says, all of a sudden, she said, she said, then this emerald green spotlight appeared in the sky. And she said, with the Lord. And then she said, then these, it was cherubims appeared, and they, she said, they, they had four sides like a box. And she said, and they were, they were in the air, and they were turning the boxes, were like, they were like, look like boxes, they were emerald green, and they were turning. And if you look at if you look at Ezekiel one, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's there. And then she said, then the angel of the Lord suddenly came and, and he was sitting on the box on, the, on this emerald colored box, like four square thing. And then she said there were thousands of angels in the sky all around Rochester. Wow. And she and she and she said that the Lord. Then she said then the. It began to beat with the heartbeat of God. <laughs> the beat of the heartbeat of God. With the whole, and she said it was the glory, but it was in this form. And it was beating with the heartbeat of God. The whole thing, she said. And, and she said that, then she said that, she said, the, she said, then she said like the box opened up, all the thousands of angels flew into the box, and the box closed up, and the box shot away. Wow. In the sky. Wow, no, that's wow. really cool. I can't really feel the presence. I know. Wow, that's cool. Awesome. And anyway, um, <laughs> now, yeah. this time she says, I'm driving to your church this time, ten, this time, ten years later. She says, I get to that spot. Where I had the experience, she's gone, I go back up in the spirit and the same thing appears, but now it's not green emerald, it's gold. Oh. And she said the boxes are gold now. Oh. And she said the same thing appeared, but it, now it was gold. Yeah. And then she said it began to beat with the heartbeat of God. Woo. The heartbeat of God. And God says, go to that room and I want my people to have my heartbeat. It's not in Chronicle 16, 9, I'm going to keep with my heartbeat like David, he had a heart, heart after God. Yes. And God's saying to you today, I want you to have my heartbeat. Yes. 
You say, but are you willing? Will you give me your heart? So I can what? Transform it. I can give you my heart. And we will what? Be as one. The Lord told Morris 12 years ago that his heartbeat is lost souls. That's the heartbeat of God. It's lost souls. And see, God wants you to enter into the season of the billion soul harvest of these ten days. And just raise your hands to the Lord because I'm telling you, the Lord even now wants to give you his heartbeat. He wants to give you his heart. But he's just looking for your willingness tonight. Your willingness to say yes. Just say it if you want to. Just say yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. I want, Jesus. I want, I want my heart to beat with your yes. heart. Yes. I want our hearts to be one together. Because what you're the head and I'm the body. He wants to do it in your heart. He's actually doing it right now. He's doing it right now. And that's why the Lord gave the same scripture to Jerry for you tonight. She just gave the heart. I'm going to do the upright in his heart. heart. Mm -hmm. See? That's right. His heart. And God's saying the prophecy here, I'm giving you my heart so that I can give you my gifts. My power gifts. My gift of faith. My working of miracles. Oh, glory, my gifts glory, of healing. Hallelujah, glory, glory. But he said he would do that this year. But he said I've been releasing my baptism of fire. I've been releasing. And I'm going to, the last few days this year, I'm burning you up with my baptism of fire. I'm purifying you. I'm releasing my spirit of holiness into your hearts. So I can trust you with my great power. Oh, yeah. mm. He says you're going to enter into his abiding glory. His abiding glory. One read your scripture here on this. The book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 27. I'm going to read the Amplified Version. The classic Amplified. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. But listen to this about the abiding. But as for you, the anointing, the sacred appointment, the unction which you have received from him abides permanently in you, so that you have no need that anyone should instruct you. But just as his anointing teaches you concerning everything and is true, and it is no falsehood. So you must abide in. Here it is. Yes. Live in. Yes. Never depart from mm -hmm. him. Being rooted in him. Knit in him. Yes. Just as his anointing has taught you to do. Yes, yes, yes. This is the abiding glory. This is the abiding of the character and nature of God. And when you abide, he says, I can trust you with my power gifts. Because you will not give in to corruption like people did in the past. Oh. But my baptism of fire, fire. Oh, thank you. has been purifying you and is doing that even now. Hallelujah. My spirit of holiness that raised Jesus from the dead, Romans 1 4. Jesus was declared, Romans 1 3 and 4, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. According to the spirit of holiness. Amen. Power to declare what is dependent on how holy you are. That's right. He had power according to holiness. See, that's the point the Lord's making. Wow. You're going to have my power according to the holiness you walk in. Oh, yeah. oh, and when you have your, my spirit of holiness, then I can trust you with my power. power. Mm. Well, let's go to Ooh, boy, because it's getting stronger. Oh, Whoa, I tell you. Oh. Whoa, there's like a trembling and a shaking. Yeah, it's going through people's beings. Who feels that trembling and shaking? Yeah. Shake your hand if you feel it. It's happening. These different people, you're not feeling it, it's still happening to you. It's even by faith. Oh. It's Hallelujah. It's happening to everybody in here. For the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 33. Oh. Boy, my whole, my legs are shaking from the trembling. <laughs> Oh, it's going through you. It is, it's going through you. Yeah. 
I want to say something. The Lord told me something else tonight. He told me that the two resurrection angels will be here. These are the, the two resurrection angels that that prophet Bob Jones that raised him from the dead. He said, there are angels that are assigned to raise the dead. Oh, wow. That's the trembling you're feeling. <laughs> the angels come and you tremble in their presence. And it's Acts 4.33 here. And we we'll read it. It says that with great power, this is what's coming now, oh. great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection, resurrection angels of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. And they're here right now because the Lord's releasing the resurrection power of the Lord Jesus into your being right now. Even God to use you to raise the dead in his name. God, I remember when we talked about at the beginning that you were born here and you were going to birth. And you were saved, right? Psalm 110 Your people will offer themselves willingly in the day of your power, in the beauty of holiness, and in the holy outlay of the world of the light. Or in other words, the dawning of when you start that. And this weekend is your cycle of the circle coming back around. God is offering it to you to sow seeds of holiness again in this ground. He said, your young man, they will spring forth who are as the do. God is going to give strength to you, ability, the anointing, because you guys are the sower of the seeds, the seeds of light. You're the one that's going to plant those seeds in people's hearts and lives and their minds. And God's going to change them with the spirit of holiness. And the water level rose 12 feet higher. And the gate is open because you're at the dawn of the dew of the morning. You guys are the womb. Because you know why? Because you made room. Yes. 
But remember the last great harvest of souls. God's heartbeat. This is all for the last great harvest of souls and billions of workers. God is. Now, Tom had had an experience he told us about. An angel appeared to him years ago, and he said this angel had a book. And he said, and on the book was written Daniel 10:21. The book the angel brought to Daniel, Daniel 10, 21. Yes. The scroll, the book. Yeah. And you know what the name of the book was? What was the name of that book? He said the name of the book was Destiny. <laughs> Awaken <laughs> Destinies. <laughs> Awaken <laughs> Destinies. It was a destiny scroll. Your scroll of God's releasing to you, he told you tonight, is your destiny. Yes, yes. That's why you feel such a spirit of God and a witness in here, and a moving, and a trembling. It's your destiny. Yes. Come on, boy. Come on. God's already ministering. <laughs> it's hard to even, it's hard to comprehend because all I can feel is comes all over my face. Man. I remember this is night one of these three meetings, and over the course of the gate began to crack open to me. Um, and then open more, and then it's just going up and out. There's coming to split their levels. Um, and what that means is you have to let go because because you can't navigate in a split your flow. You have to let go and let Jesus carry you down the river of what he wants to do. Um, but he needs you, and he's called you, and he sent us here to tell you it's beyond. This is why you're here, and this is why you're beginning to run. And you've got a whole lot more in your gun, personally. you got a whole lot more in the end. And I'll let us just begin. Amen. Float my boat. These next five years is just going to explode for you guys. Hallelujah. You're not going to be able to catch up, you're going to have to raise up kings. There's going to be kings going everywhere because you can't keep up. But it's birthing now. Hallelujah. These next five years is going to be exponential. So it's the shifting of years. He's going to give you more kings. He's going to give you more help, more support. Because if you're willing to sow seeds out of your need, he's going to more than meet your need. Because you've been giving without having anything to give. And you've been giving by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. No, that's what I'm going to my hands in So, um, we'll pray for healing and all that, too. That's a given. But I really feel like, um, like the Lord said, you have to begin to have a view of hope and a view of expectation for a future. What's the Lord say? For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, to give you a future and a hope yes. and a good outcome. It's not the end. It's called global reformation. You just got to hold steady for a little while till uh, Jesus cleans things up. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, the nations are going to realign because they're not in the proper line. Yep. They're in man's alignment. And it's not the time of the end. They tried to bring me in before yep, the time. Yep, they did. But that's going to go back a little because mm -hmm. it's not time. And the nations actually are going to realign in a different alignment. Yep. Because of the harvest, the end time harvest assignment. Jesus has come to harvest the nations. And a little nugget for you, the immigrants in our nation, our God is concerned about that because nations that are closed to the gospel, there's only two things that will open them up to harvest is war mm -hmm. or immigration. Because he will actually cause nations to go into a nation that's about to be harvested so they can get swept in. Oh, oh wow. That's awesome. 
because mm. their nation won't exploit the U.S. Wow. And so the Lord knows where all these fish are out in the ocean,、mm -hmm. and He will send those fish to wherever He's going about to go、wow. as the net, and He will get to it. Wow. So wow. So you can pray the immigrants go out, but pray that they go out safe. Safe. Amen. But、um, God's not concerned about them coming in and out. He's concerned about our attitudes.、Mm -hmm. Now it doesn't mean they're all good. You know, God does bad purposes in there too. But God, who's in control of that? So God has a plan, and He is going to realign nations. And you're going to be surprised because nations that have evil intents, you, you can see that our plans crumble already. Yes. But there are nations that are going to re have different alignments and alliances, and nations' borders are even going to change for a little while because he wants to realign them so he can go in and harvest them.、Mm. There's doors opening on on hard closed nations right now. They're going to be open for a little while so he can get them. So don't don't freak out if nations change. If one nation takes over another one for a little while or whatever, because、uh, iron gates are going to open, Amen. And God's going to go in and fish for them. And so, it's okay to say, Lord, the nations will realign according to Your design, because it's harvest time. Yes, Amen. 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 Well, when, we, when we pray for you, I, I, keep, I keep my feet keep trembling. That angel, that angel, see, when, when the angel at the scroll appeared to Daniel in chapter ten, he said he trembled. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. Yes. So you're going to enter into this trembling as God gives you your destiny scroll tonight, and that, that it's, going to, it's going to come into your being.、Mm -hmm. And he also was sent to Daniel to give him understanding of what was written in there. Yeah. Yeah. And so even. As the old things are passing away, and, and all that we've done is, is ending, and God's going to do something new, He'll give you a preview. He'll let you read a page or two, so that can position you. So be open for Him to show you new things. Absolutely. And when He shows you a new thing, don't run away and say no. <laughs> <laughs> just say, just be like Sue. Here I am, Lord, send me. Right? Wow. You have to have a view for an adventure. So that you keep your joy. Yes. But he said, "Hope and expectation is the ones I will employ." Amen. Oh. Those that have hope. Oh. Those have expectations are the ones I will employ. Wow. Keep your joy, because it's your strength. It's not the end. And if you know it's not the end, we have time left. That means you're on assignment. Because you guys are the harvesters. That's right. Every one of you has influenced somebody, don't you? Give them some love. Give them some compassion. They need a spanking. Spank them. But but give them hope. It's going to be okay. Daddy's just re rearranging the house. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. So I guess we're going to pray for people who want to blame them, and we'll just lay hands on you.、Um, we're not prophecy machines, although we can be. <laughs> So, but if I don't give your word, or he don't give your word, it's okay. Receive the anointing. He is the word. Yeah. Well, but just whatever you need, just say, Lord, you're the Spirit of Truth. I receive it. So make a line up here and have your phone to record. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna turn this.